Playing that. Get that out of your hand now. What are you, what are you writing my number to play it down for? Huh? Why are you intimidating us out here? Get my number to play it out of your book now. Can you get that camera out of my face? No, now? you're right. Get my number out of your, that book now. Go on. What do you think you're playing at? Well, what do you think you're playing at? I'm going to go and write your number plate down now. You should be ashamed of yourself. Why? What do you mean, why? What do you think you're playing at? Yo, what's going on, guys? I hope you're well. So today we're here outside HMP Balini. This is Scotland's biggest prison. This is Scotland's biggest prison, guys. This prison here is Scotland's biggest prison, all right? Some big, big, um, well-known um, inmates have been here. Paul Ferris, he is a gangland member in Scotland. If you don't know who he is, I'm sure you'll Google him. That's Paul Ferris. Over a thousand inmates are actually here right now in Barlini. So let's go and check it out. Let's go and say hello to a few people, see what's going on. The way the police reacted yesterday outside the police station, I can only assume this is going to go a bit crazy, but uh... Alright guys, so here we are, this is the front entrance here at Barlini. Just looking at it already, it seems very high secure. Hello. Is that then? Because it's a carbon building. It's a what? Sorry. A carbon building. You're not allowed to film anywhere. Why are you filming anywhere? It's just um, for YouTube, really. Right. You need to go outside. And yeah. You need to go off the premises. Okay. Is it against the law to film outside? Yes. It's a carbon building. I can't hear you. Sorry. I'm. You're what? not allowed to film anywhere. It's a government building. Yeah. So you need to leave the premises altogether. Right, okay. So I'm definitely not allowed to come outside. Is this Scotland's biggest prison? Yes. Is it? Right, okay. Um, I mean, I'm all right outside though, aren't I? No, I, I? It's hard to understand, sorry. I can't hear you. I'm, I don't know. Right, well, I'm going to go and stand outside. If I'm not allowed in the building, that's fine. I'll stand outside. You're not allowed down here. Down the boats at the shops. You need to be down here. Okay, I'm, I'm, not, I'm going to stand outside. I'm not going to cause a fuss. What is that? I'm not going to cause a fuss. You, you, you're making me... I need to understand that this is not public land. You're not allowed to film it. I'm trying... I'm going to go. Okay. You're going to take these out of the shop together. You're not allowed to film out there either. Right. Okay. Hi, How are you doing, mate? All right. Good. How's it going? Very good. Good level. <laughs> All right, buddies. All right, listen. I'm just going to film outside here. Why? Why am I not allowed to do that? Oh, am I not? No, you're not. Is it against the law? Yes. Or oh, what law is that then? Do you know? I don't. Offhand, I don't. Oh, you don't know. So you can't really say it's against the law, can you? Yeah, I can. Cause why is that then? Because I can. Because we have. I well, that's quite a lot of people to leave for the ones who have done it. So if you don't mind, if you just head to the bottom of the... Head to the bottom of the world, show me. Just to the bottom of the road. No, no, I'm not going to walk if you're not going to show me. Right. Why, what? I don't understand what the fuss is, sir. It's against what? What law is that? I can't hear you, sorry. You've got your mask on and you... I know, but I'm struggling to understand. Do you want to turn your mobile off as well? Why am I... No. I'm going to... You can call the police, right? But I'm not doing anything wrong. Can you show me a sign where it says that? Uh -huh. It says no smoking, it doesn't say no filming. I've asked you to do it. Okay. You've asked me to do it, are you? Right. Just call the police, bro. Uh, all right. You're wasting their time, aren't you? You're wasting the police's time. I'm going to do what I'm going to do. You can't stop me. 
Scotland. Then why? Because it's against the law. What law is it? Right. I'm stop wasting it. my it's time and stop wasting the police's time. Just I was nice to you, now you're just messing me around. I'm very nice to you. No, you know, you're calling the police. You weirdo. Now I'm going to go over here and read this sign. Um, it's telling us that they're filming us. But it's not telling. There's an helicopter over there. Police helicopter. Uh, images are being recorded for the purpose of crime prevention or, and safety. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. The police helicopter just there, look. See, there's another sign here that says no fouling. Now, he said it's against the law. Now, obviously, I'm in a different country, and it may just be against the law, but I'm curious to uh, to find out what law this is. It's the wall there with the barbed wires on the, along the top. Just for the record, yeah, it's very difficult to understand someone who's Scottish if you're not Scottish, right? And... Uh, when, when they've got a mask on as well, it's even harder. I tried lip reading, but I couldn't even do that because they had the mask on. All right, guys, we've just walked around the back and you really get to see some of the uh, prison cells here, look. They've got the windows open on some of them. You can actually hear the TV on. Which I find very crazy. So I wonder what wing that is. <laughs> to have one of them cells, it must really feel good because you get to look at um, the outside world and see people coming and going, which is not bad if you're in prison, considering. So you've got number 33, 32, you've got other, other prison cells there, as you can see. See, on this side, you can actually see uh, the bottom floor as well. As you can see, one, two, three, four, five. It tells you the cell numbers. How's it going, mate? Hello. How's it going? How's it going? You good? Aye, good. Aye, aye. Are you a prison officer? No. Ah. What are you filming for? Just to highlight the corruption. For what? Well, there's a lot of corruption going on in here. A lot of prison officers bringing in drugs. A lot of prison officers bringing in mobile phones. You know, adding uh, adding prisoners um, more sentencing on top of them, which is not you know a prisoner in the the vulnerable. Of course they are, yeah. Right. So if the vulnerable prison officers should not be abusing the powers, no, bringing in drugs. Don't they? Yeah, they, exactly. This is what this is why I'm here. No, I'm not. So you're here to hassle them, are you? No, I'm here to highlight the news, really, because like you say, it's not in the media. It's not in the you know. Um, I think it's important that everyone should know that you know prisoners in here are very vulnerable. And they should not be, um, you know, tempted by drugs because prison officers want a bit of money. How are you guys? Are you looking after the prisoners well in there? Always. I hope so. Don't be smuggling any drugs for them, all right? Because the vulnerable inmates, them. And no flirting with the uh, male inmates as well, lady, please. Hey, so you all right? All right. Yeah, no ringing in drugs for the inmates, please. Keep it clean. Look after them. They need your help. They don't need drugs. Don't need you flirting with them. Keep your hands off them. Hey, mate. Do you work in there, yeah? Yeah. Are they getting looked after? Hey, yeah, I hope so, mate. Because a lot of inmates and they're very vulnerable. Hey, aren't they? Hey. They're vulnerable. Because they think me broke it. It's, they've done well in there. Yeah, well, I hope so, mate. So what I want to do is just pan from left to right to show you the size of this uh, this prison here, guys. As you can see, it holds over a thousand inmates. It's uh, it's something else. Like I say, Ross Kemp came here to do a uh, a documentary, and it seemed pretty damn rough, to be quite honest. But it looks like in 2019, they're building a super prison which uh, I don't think this is going to be the biggest anymore. It seems like that's what they're doing around the UK, building these super prisons and super police stations. So yeah, let's see how, uh, you know, how that's gonna pan out. How's it going? You all right? 
So like I said before, they get looked after very well. And they get looked after well. Come on, guys, you don't have to ignore me. Just to the camera and say, you know what, yeah, they get looked after well. And we're not bringing in drugs. Would you ever bring in drugs for the inmates? No comment really makes you look guilty, to be honest. Come on, guys. Come on. I hope that bag gets searched on the way in. Why are you laughing? Enjoy your dinner. Who uh, has probably been visiting her boyfriend, to be honest. I didn't understand a word she's saying, and that's not being funny. I'm struggling to understand Scottish people today. We see it a lot, don't we? A lot of prisoners, a lot of prison, sorry, prison officers keep going, you know, bringing in drugs and having sexual relationships with prisoners. I don't think we should do that. I think it's important to know that they're vulnerable. It's important to know that we're, you know, they want to just do the time and leave. If you're doing an eight-year sentence and a prison officer comes in with drugs, you're going to probably take it because it's... You think, I've got eight years in here, I might as well, I've got to do something to pass time. The temptation is too much. Do you see what, I know what you're saying, sweet. I, and I, you know, I'm not here to put it on you, but I think it's important that we highlight this. If any prison officers end up watching this, they might think, you know what, it's not worth bringing it in. Do you understand what I mean? Because if no one's putting the pressure on the establishment, what can we do? What can we do? Who, it's just going to happen all the time. And I'm sure, I mean, I hope you've never been tempted. But I'm sure there's prison officers, prisoners in there who'd snatch your hand off a weed or spice. You know what I mean? Um, please don't ever be tempted by money. Please don't. I'm sure you won't. But you wouldn't, would you? No. You wouldn't. No. I hope you wouldn't because you know what? You've got you're a young girl. I'm sure you've got the whole life ahead of you. The last thing you would want is to be behind bars for doing something um, for someone in there and. It, they'll get by and I'm sure there's medical people in there who will help them and assist them and get, give them the advice and support they need. I'm sure you, you do, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so people shouldn't be tempted by money and I understand. No, I get that. And it, it's a very small percentage. It does happen. Yeah. We've got to look out for each other. That's what I'm saying, you know. Well, thank you for the chat. I really appreciate it. All right, guys. So we've got to wrap this one here. Um, Ross Kemp came here to do the documentary and he highlighted... Um, some of the stuff which is going on behind these walls. Obviously, I'm not going to gain access. It's just at the top of bottom line. I've spoken to a few people, some people didn't want to talk. But nice lady there interacted with me to give me um, an understanding. And I really hope I've uh, really got to her, if she ever gets tempted, to uh, to obviously not do it. All right? Um, yeah, like I said, this is Bellini. Bellini, Scotland's biggest prison. All right, guys. So this male... I'm about to show you. He jumped into his car and followed me whilst I was on foot leaving the prison. And I turned left and I carried on walking down. And my car was on a side street on one of the other streets, all right, well away from the uh, the prison. Now, I thought the, 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 the coast was clear. I then went back to my car, which is on a couple of roads down. I jumped in the car and I waited 10 minutes and then... I thought he must have gone by now. I turned right. He sat there in the car waiting for me to turn right. I then noticed he was following me. So and then I thought, right, okay, let's see what's going on here. I then pulled up outside the shop. Um, and he pulled up behind me. And I thought, right, I'm not going to leave the car. I'm going to see what he does. He jumps out of the car with his notepad, stands in front of the car and starts writing down my number plate. And... Um, so I jumped out of the car and I went and confronted him. What are you playing at? Get that out of your hand now. What are you, what are you writing my number to play it down for? Huh? Why are you intimidating this out here? Get my number to play it out of your book now. Can you get that camera out my face? No, or? you're... Go on. What do you think you're playing at? Well? What do you think you're playing at? I'm going to go and write your number to play it down now. Should be ashamed of yourself. Why? What do you mean, why? What do you think you're playing at? What do you What do you think you're doing, what, Scott? At? You're following me a bit. I've got your name now, anyway. Scott yeah. Luffy, yeah, thanks. 
That's all I need to know, man. It. I've got everything on you now. There we go. Scott. <laughs> Cheers, mate. That's all I needed. I just needed his name. I've now got his first and last name. Cheers, mate. And there we have it. This male followed me around for about 10, 15 minutes, probably 20 minutes, to be honest, because I waited 10 minutes. So he was just waiting for me. He was circulating the, the area, and then he came across me again. He then parked up behind me and uh, got his notepad out and started writing details down. Now, he's not a police officer. This is definitely not in his line of duty to be able to do this. I don't know why he thought that would be good. So uh, I, I approached him, as you've just seen. Now, I can't find his second name i looked at his badge if anyone couldn't in the comment section let me know his name that would be appreciated um not that i'm going to search him or anything like that it's just mainly just for uh, my personal uh, records if anything happens to my car um at least then i can hand that name over to the police we go live every night at 8 p.m so tonight don't forget i'm going to be live i'm in uh, edinburgh tonight so i'm going to go and highlight some of the corruption which is going on there all right mm -hmm.